Welcome back to East or Inside Tennessee on this Sunday morning. Uh, we're speaking on the opioid epidemic, and both of you guys have spent time in Nashville working in the House. Is this an issue that can be solved in Nashville, or is this an issue that has to be solved independently in each city and each county and the resources that are allocated there? <laughs> Ms. Johnson? The answer is yes, <laughs> because it can, Nashville can help, but also we've got to get local, and we do have to get everybody at the table. But if you're talking about schools for kids in recovery, you've got to talk to teachers. And so the reality is the program that Knox County had that I worked in is a great start for that. And so there are lots of ideas that, you know, we need to talk to teachers about that stuff because they do have ideas. Many of us have worked in those programs in the school system and there's ways to make it work. Uh, but we've really got to make sure everyone's at the table. And I think it's the answer is also yes, I'll agree with, uh, both. you know, Ms. Johnson, that it's going to take um, our mental health experts, it's going to take education, but we also need to engage our faith community uh, because there is some great recovery programs through our faith community which are seeing remarkable uh, results of people who go through those programs. So it's going to take everyone working together to solve this epidemic. It can't just be one piece of the puzzle uh, on the legislature. It's going to take everybody working together to solve this problem. Well, there's a lot of topics. I want to turn over to our panel now to well, let's mothers. talk about education. That's something that both of you have been very involved in and, and certainly talk about in the campaign. And I, the 10 ready uh, <laughs> issues that we've had over the, over the past three or four years, I know is something that yeah. both of you have Issues are a kind about. way to put that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, Eddie, I know at the end of the session, you, try, you brought some legislation about to try to do some, some uh, short-term cures, I guess, for it. What is the solution for this, Eddie? And then, Gloria, I'd like to hear your... The your solutions comment. are really, uh, we need a new Department of Education. Um, and think that will happen under the new administration. We're going to have a new commissioner no matter which way this uh, the election goes on November the 6th. And really what we've got to do and what I've heard from educators is, you know, they want the data because that data really does help drive instruction in the classroom, but they need it to get back to them sooner and it needs to be in, an, a, in a format that it helps uh, the children in the classroom. So one of the things that I've actually started talking about and that I'm looking at is splitting the tea and ready test up. First of all, the name needs to go away because it's not been it's ready. Not ready. We, we've had three years of just mistake after mistake, but we need to look at doing an assessment where we get a midpoint and we get the end of year so that we're doing less tests all the way around that's less high stakes but we're actually seeing where are the students struggling and where can it help drive instruction in the classroom uh, so that parents and teachers have that data to help their children at home and I guess what I would say is the problem started when they took the teacher seat away at, uh, at the table and that's they, d they developed this testing and, and, in and instituted this testing without talking to teachers and so we know that this testing is used for multiple things not just students uh, outcomes and I want to make sure that every test is going to benefit a student's instruction. And so the reality is we need to look at something. If you're going to, if you're going to monitor, if you're going to measure teachers by these tests, you've got to create tests that, you, that that's the measure. And so you create a pre-test, post-test to show how far each kid went each year. And so that's a fair judgment. But we're putting high stakes decision on a test that really um, was not developed by educators, it was de developed by testing companies. And so it doesn't give us the data we need. And of course, it doesn't give it on time. And quite frankly, it's not been giving the data at all. Teachers do test every day and, and, you know, and every week that kind of give us a, a starting point for where kids are and what they missed and what they need for next week. So if we're gonna have a test that just measures how we're doing in the state, I get that and, and I'm okay with that. We can talk about do we need to do it every year and do we need to have it as part of the student's grade? Do we need to have it also measure teachers? I think that's where the problem is coming. There's too much stress, too much pressure from that test, and it, it doesn't have to look like it does now, and we need teachers at the table. Do you well, have a response to that? Well, and I think those are all valid points, and that's why what we did this year was we made sure that this year's test did not hurt students, it did not hurt teachers, but it also did not hurt the schools. Uh, now, we did see the uh, list that was released, uh, I think, last week or the week before from the Department of Ed, which shows the schools that are kind of on the, uh, the, still the bottom 5%, but the reason that list had to be put out is so that we could continue to draw down the federal funds that are helping a lot of the 
the programs in those schools. So we had to put the list out according to what our ESSA plan required uh, under the federal guidelines so that we can continue putting those federal funds where we but, need to help students and teachers. To be honest, the reality of it is we're here because you have been supporting those tests. You're backing off now because it's been a fiasco, but you have supported that test. Organizations like Tennesseans for Student Success that are uh, helping your campaign and that you're working with highly support the TN Ready. It's on their it's on their website. So, you know, let's look about who wanted to institute this without talking to teachers first. Well, yeah, that's a gross mischaracterization of what I've done the last few years because I've actually had a round table every single year where I've brought teachers from the district in, both tested and non-tested, to hear from them. I've taken a lot of those solutions that they've brought to the table and have brought bills to bring uh, down in Nashville. So to say I've been just uh, not listening to teachers is a gross mischaracterization of what's happened. Uh, and, you know, so what we're seeing is, uh, based on all that feedback, is how can we use the test to make sure that at the end of the day we're <coughs> helping students. I've got kids in K-12 through in Knox County and I want to make sure that we're getting that data to help even my own children just as I want every single parent in Knox County to have that data to help their kids. It's not a mischaracterization. Well, I hate to interrupt this conversation <laughs> but we have to take a quick break we'll be right back with more.